Right, so um, let me just start by saying what I mean by diversity. I mean, you probably all have some idea of what diversity means to you when you think of the word. Um, so just I in the simplest way, it just means like variety. Yeah? How much variety do we have uh, in our system? And so uh, if I take my uh, back garden, uh, which consists of uh, woodlouse or pillbugs, uh, crane flies, uh, ladybugs, and aphids, um, then different sites in my garden have got different numbers of these, uh, these insects. And, um, but, you know, I've got a variety in my system. And so um, one simple measure of diversity is just saying, well, how many species do I have? So in this case, four, right? So, um, and so that's sort of the most simple definition you could come up with about diversity, but it doesn't tell the whole story, right? So, I mean, if I look at my three sites here, there's clearly more going on than just having four species. They all have that in common, but they're clearly different. I have clearly got a bit of a, uh, a woodlouse problem in site three, for example. So, um, so how do we distinguish them? Um, so really we want to include more information. We want to include the relative uh, contribution of each species to the community. So in other words, we want to put a probability uh, distribution that, that says what's the relative frequency of each species um, in, my, in my site. Okay. Um, and so this is going to allow us to capture not just the richness, the number of species, but then we can say something about how even the uh, distribution of species are? So have we got the same amount of each species? Uh, have we got one species that's dominating, for example? So that's the idea. So we want a, a, a measure of diversity that can kind of summarize all this in, in, in one statistic. That's, that's the plan. Okay, so it turns out that the most sort of accepted way of doing this in the literature is um, the Hill numbers, which are the exponential of Rennie entropies that you heard about this morning. Okay. Um, and so given a probability distribution, which is basically the relative abundance of each of our species, then if we take the re exponential of the Rennie entropies, then this is diversity. This is, a measure, this is a measure of diversity. And so the one in the middle here with Q equal 1, that's the exponential of Shannon entropy that you've already seen. Okay. Um, so, um, so then two questions sort of naturally come up. One is, why take the exponential? And, and Tobias has sort of uh, get already told you a little bit about that. Uh, and the other is, what does Q mean? Or, uh, this, was, this was beta in Tobias' talk, um, but um, here it's Q. So what, what does that mean? Okay. So those are the two questions. So let's start off with why take the exponential. Um, so the simplest example to kind of explain why the exponential is needed, um, and this is really what Hill developed when, when he kind of come up with taking the exponential of these entropies, was that um, we need the diversity to be an effective number, so actually sort of measuring number of species in some way. Um, so let me give you uh, an example. So if we take a, a continent of a million equally abundant species, and they're well mixed, so it's all kind of distributed nice and well mixed, um, and a meteorite, meteorite hits the Earth and wipes out 50% of my species, you know, it's, it's a fair meteorite, it does it quite fairly, um, then you would kind of expect that your diversity should drop by 50%, right? You've lost 50% of your species, it should go down by 50%, right? Um, well, Shannon entropy doesn't. It just goes down by 5%, okay? And it's because it's not an effective number. If it turns out, if you take the exponential, then it does do exactly what you expect. It goes down by that 50%. So that's a big reason why we want to take the exponential. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, so what it means is um, the way to think about it is that if you um, if you take uh, it's it's the effective number is the effective number of species if they were equally distributed. Basically, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so that's why it's important. And, and as, as Tobias has said, it's because it's sort of measuring size of a set. That's also why it's kind of doing the right thing. It's sort of measuring size of a community. Okay. Um, if you want to know more about that sort of size aspect, Tom's the the person to talk to. Okay. okay, so so that's what the why the exponential. What about what the Q is doing? Okay, so what's this parameter doing that's in the in the Rennie, Rennie entropies? So um, so what we can do is actually just plot all these um, diversity measures um, for all the values of Q, and that's what's on this graph here. Um, and so what the Q is representing it's a viewpoint parameter. So it's a sort of perspective on the system. Um, and so um, if we're over on the left here 
then um, basically what we're getting is species richness, or literally we're counting the species. Okay. Um, and then as we move over to the far right, so Q equal infinity, then basically what we're... Um, so if you've come across diversity measures before, then uh, we've got one over the Berger-Parker index. But basically, it's really not caring very much about the rare things, and it's all, all the emphasis is put on the abundance things. And so that's what this, this Q is doing. It's kind of um, saying how much you care about the, the rare stuff or not. So, for example, if this curve didn't change very much, and it was quite flat, then that would suggest your distribution was very even. Okay. So the, the more change, if this changed quite rapidly, it, so it would suggest that you have quite a lot of very rare things in your system. Okay. Okay. Um, so, okay. so that's what the Q's representing. But that's all well and good if we can sort of happily define what a species is. Okay. Um, there are definitely instances where, where we can't really categorize that's a species. Um, microbes are a good example of that. Um, even, uh, people have even thought about this in the context of con conservation, and that the, the people have acknowledged that diversity needs some concept of, of distance, some measure of dissimilarity between the resources or species in question. Okay. For example, if we take um, uh, barnacles here, if we had 10 species of barnacle, I mean, they clearly should be less diverse than if I had uh, um, a, a room of, you know, barnacles and starfish and loads of other things, right? So somehow we want to capture that information. We've got, the moment we've got no information about how related or unrelated these species are. So that's the next step. So how can we then take this idea a little bit further, push it a bit further to include information about how related or unrelated the species are? Okay, so that brings us to introduce a bit more into our model of our community. Uh, we started off with just having abundance data of our species, <coughs> and now we're going to throw in some information about how similar or dissimilar those species are, and that's a, a, a matrix, um, S by S matrix, where S is the total number of species in our system. And so uh, the entries in the matrix all go between 0 and 1, and if you've got 1, then those species are completely identical, whatever identical is meaning for you, and then zero, uh, they're going to be completely dissimilar. Okay, And so in the simplest case, we could just have the identity matrix, and that means you're only identical to yourself and no other species. So that's exactly what's basically been assumed in the Rennie entropies. You're assuming that each species is completely different from everything else. Okay, um, But you can choose your, your Zs to include more information. So if, for example, you're interested in genetic diversity, you might want to include information on how genetically um, similar or dissimilar your species are, in which case you can, up, you can include that as entries in your matrix here. You might want to be interested in phylogenetic diversity, in which case you might want to measure how close or far your species are on a phylogenetic tree. Again, you can input that information here. So depending on your choice of Z, that's specifying what you're quantifying the diversity of. Okay. So, um, so then what, so how do we throw in this matrix then? Okay, well, let's, um, let's just think about what this matrix is, is telling us then. So um, if we just take um, ZP, so uh, um, the product here, and look at the ith entry, then this is telling us the ordinariness of the ith species, okay? So this is how it's saying, ZIJ is saying how similar species I is to J, and so if we sum up over J here, we're saying how similar are other species in the system to uh, I. So how ordinary is species I? Okay, is it very ordinary or is it not very ordinary? Okay. Um, okay. So, well, we could take the average of that. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, so we could take the, get the average ordinariness of a species in our system. Okay. So if we do that, just w uh, weight it here by the, the PIs. And so this is some measure of lack of diversity. Okay, this is really high. Everything's very ordinary. It's very similar to this, this uh, everything else. Okay, so if we took over one over that, then we've actually got a measure of diversity, how different things are. And if you um, stare at uh, this formula a bit, well, let's, so let's just move on a bit before we stare at it. That's okay. So, so I just took a regular kind of average there, like just a, a, just a regular average. So what we can take other kinds of averages. We can take power means instead. Okay. Um, so this is the formula for a weighted power mean. So uh, these are our, um, our weights here, the probabilities, and this is what we're averaging, and we just take powers, basically. 
Okay. So this is a generalized power mean. So if we instead of so if we go back when we do the averaging instead of taking a like a kind of just gen normal average, let's take a power mean average here. So we're going to get a power mean average of ordinariness. Then this is the formula we end up with. And so this is the one you want to stare at a bit. So if you stare at a bit, in particular if we had z equal i, then this is the formula we've already seen. This is the exponential of the Rennie entropies. Okay. So this formula here, um, so 1 over this formula is, 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 is basically our diversity of order Q when we include information about similarity of species. And so when z is i, we exactly recover the exponential of the Rennie entropies. Okay. So it's somehow allowing us to include distance into our ideas of, of, of uh, entropy and diversity. And it also gives us another way of understanding why exponential of Rennie entropy and diversity are actually sort of connected somehow, why it is the right, right thing to think about. Okay. okay, so, well, how does this behave? How does introducing this Z uh, change things? Uh, does it change things? Okay. Um, so let me give you an example of some data, butterfly data from the Ecuadorian rainforest. Um, so um, there's two sites, there's the canopy <coughs> and the understory. And so we've got these various species of butterfly and there's their abundance. Now, uh, one thing to notice here is that uh, these ones down the bottom are, are all in the same genus. Okay? So what I'm going to do then is I'm just going like, to set up a simple measure of distance for um, this particular example where I'm going to basically measure taxonomic diversity. So I'm going to set up a similarity matrix where I put zero if the um, species are in different um, genuses and uh, genres, sorry, and I'm going to... Um, put 0.5 if they're in the same, uh, in the same genus and 1 if they're, they're the same species completely. Okay. So, um, okay. so if we do that, so we've got this similarity matrix, we're going to plug it into our, our, our expression for diversity, we're going to calculate our relative abundance using these abundance numbers here, okay. and what do we get? So um, on the left here is a diversity profile, so in other words, plotting diversity for all values of Q. Uh, for the naive case, so the case where we don't have the similarity information. In other words, that Z is the identity matrix. Okay. Um, and so what we see is if we look at the canopy and the understory, then actually we would probably end up concluding from this that the canopy is always more diverse than the understory. Okay. Um, now, um, if we then look at the case where we've got this taxonomic uh, similarity matrix, in our diversity measure, then the, then the picture changes a bit and our conclusion changes. So um, suddenly we, what we see is these diversity <coughs> profiles, they cross. So this was relating to what Robert was asking earlier on. And they can cross for the naive case as well. So this was uh, what, was <laughs> what, 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 what had been asked um, earlier on about um, uh, entropies. So they can, they can cross. And so what we can see, actually, is depending on our viewpoint, if we just think about species richness, yes, just, just counting number of species, yes, the canopy is more diverse. But um, actually, if we, if we sort of um, focus less on the rare species and, and think more about the abundant ones, then the, then the picture changes, and it's the understory that's actually more diverse. So let's go back at the data and try and understand that. Okay, if we look at the data, then um, what we see is that, um, that, that most of the species in the canopy were actually in this one genus. Okay. So, so from the point of view of this similarity matrix, these are almost like one species, because okay, they're very close to each other, okay, compared to these guys that are a long way apart from each other. Okay, so it's like this guy, this, the canopy almost like has one, one species, and, and also, the, domi they're all, also the, spe the, the main species, the dominant species, are also in this same genus. Okay. Whereas if we look at the canopy, they're much, more e they're much spread more over, and we've got like more dominant species in these, these categories. Okay. And that's what's being reflected in this picture. So it's allowing you to pick out more signals in the data. Okay. So it's allowing you to make more comparisons. So from a taxonomic point of view, uh, yes, the canopy has more species, but, um, but it has, it has uh, lots of species that are in the same genus. Okay. And so we can get that information from these profiles. Okay, so that's good. We we're sort of starting to compare sites now, but can we, what else can we do? So I might like to take that comparison idea a, a little step further. Okay. So, um, <coughs> so if we go back to like, my back garden, then I had you know, three sites that I was measuring. So I've got sites, and so I might want to compare the sort of what's happening in the diversity in one site 
to, to, to something else. Now, it might not necessarily make sense to compare it to another site because they might not be related at all, but it probably does make sense to compare what's happening in one site to what's happening overall in my entire garden, okay, or in other words, my ecosystem. So, um, so now I'm going to try and make that comparison and see what else I can say about the system. So I'm going to introduce another... Um, probability distribution, the G here, which is telling me the relative abundance of each of my species across the whole garden. So how abundant is species one across the whole garden? Okay. Okay. And then the P is just referring to a particular site that I've been studying. Okay, so the questions I want to ask is, well, what is that site contributing to the whole diversity? And also, is, is that site special in any way? Is it quite typical? Like, can I pick out any of those features? from using these measures. Okay. So, um, okay, so if, we, if we're going to think about this first question, um, what is the site contributing to the ecosystem, then we might want to think, well, how ordinary are these species in this site compared to the ecosystem? So let's try and set up that average and, and, and start there. Okay. So let's look at the ordinariness of the IFE species in the ecosystem. So that's the, exactly like the formula we'd seen earlier. We're just taking a, an average of the, of the ordinariness, um, but this time we're, we're, we're getting the abundance distribution from the whole, the whole ecosystem. Okay, so we can do our, we can do our general pa generalized power mean of this, but what we're going to do, though, is take the weights coming from our site that we're studying. So we're, you are using, we're measuring our ordinariness of our species from our global point of view, but we want to see, like, we're, we're, we're taking the, the average from the, the site point of view. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know yeah. 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 So basically, I mean, I mean, it's, I'm just meaning similarity. It's the same thing. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we could just say how how sim. Yeah. The the average. I guess it's quite hard to <laughs> find the right way of saying with similarity, but yeah, is, is, is uh, on average, are things quite similar to everything else in the system or are they quite different? Yeah, that's what we're basically measuring. Okay, so now we're, we're, we're calculating that, that how, how similar things are in, in site I, but we're doing it from using the similarity information from the ecosystem. Okay. So actually, so we've got this formula um, and we've got cross entropy, which is this. Okay, um, uh, it's, it's one of the, I think it's one of the ent few entropy measures that hasn't hasn't popped up yet. So this is this is the formula for it. Um, okay, so if uh, for example, if you look at the the Rene entropy version of it, then uh, so for Q equal one, this is just it's this. Okay, or G, I guess. Okay. Okay. So um, and actually, this thing here is just um, one over, uh, sorry, uh, one over this is just the exponential of this cross entropy. Okay, so this is this is ordinariness. One over it should give us some measure of diversity, and it turns out that's exactly the exponential of cross entropy. Okay. So, um, okay, so what does this tell us? So, so cross cross diversity is what I'll, I'll just kind of use that term for it at the moment is is the exponential of cross entropy. Okay, so um, so what does it tell us about our system? Okay. So it turns out that, um, that these two sites here have the highest cross-diversity. Cross okay. Why? Because if we look at, so this was uh, back to my example of the back garden. So if we look at um, these two sites, then what we see is actually all the species in them are quite unusual. They're quite rare. Okay. In other words, not very ordinary, not very similar to other things. Okay. So here I, I should probably say I'm just using the identity matrix here. Okay. So the abundance is, uh, of these species is very low uh, compared to overall the abundance of, of, of the species in the system. So we've got lots of species. Not many are, are crane flies, ladybirds, and, and aphids. Okay. So it turns out that high cross-diversity is telling us sites that have lots of rare species in our system. Okay. okay. So, okay, can we, can we push this further? What else can we say? Um, so in the special case where Z is the identity matrix and Q is 1, then uh, there's a relationship between um, entropy, cross-entropy, and relative entropy. Okay. Um, so this is the relationship. Um, and so these are 
the formulas. Okay, so there's your regular uh, 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 entropy here. Uh, cross entropy we've seen, and then the relative entropy here. Okay, um, and so, okay, so that... Yeah, so I sort of generalise them at the moment, but this, this statement's only true for this special case. Yeah, for, for Z equal I, the identity matrix, and Q equal 1. Yeah. Um, no, no, I don't think it is. Oh. I, yeah, no, 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 I don't think it's true in general. <laughs> That's 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 fine, I think. Yeah. It's non zero. Yeah. You just yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, so so Okay, although this form is not generally true, maybe relative entropy is going to tell us something useful. So, so let's, um, let's, let's take a, a, a look into relative entropy. Okay. So, um, okay, so if we start by just looking, if we, let's go to the formula for relative entropy. So it's, it, okay, if in the naive case when Z equals I, then we've got this P over G that comes in. So let's, this is just an element-wise division. So take the elements in the, the site, probability distribution and divide it by the elements in the, 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 the ecosystem or global probability distribution. So let's just have a look at that for a second. And so this is basically telling us the relative ordinariness of species I in the site compared to the, uh, the ecosystem. So it's giving us some measure of how, how ordinary is the species in that site compared to the ecosystem. Um, and so if we do this again, this average, if we do this uh, power mean average, then, uh, but, but doing the weights by the abundance in the site, then we're getting some average relative ordinariness of our species in the site when we're compared to the ecosystem. Okay, so we're sort of doing some kind of uh, comparison. Um, so you can, you can sort of, I mean, because relative entropy is, uh, is related to sort of divergence of, of, of probability distributions, you can think about this as like how how far away or how close is the is the distribution for the site compared to the ecosystem. So it's given us some information on that. Okay. So if we do one over this average, then we've got our diversity measure. Okay. So uh, what does that tell us about the system? Okay. So. Um, so it turns out that that also tells us something. So which, so if I take my back garden example again, um, which sites have high relative diversity? In other words, high exponential of relative entropy. Okay. And it turns out it's this first one. Okay. Why is that? It's because if we look at our distribution of species for the whole ecosystem, the whole back garden, then this distribution is the furthest away from that. Okay. It's most different. So this site is most distinct, if you like, um, from compared to the, the compared to the ecosystem, it's most different from the ecosystem. So that's what uh, this uh, relative diversity is, is telling us. Okay. okay. So um, let me just like sum up and uh, tell you what we've we've got. So, so we've got this idea that um, that these generalized relative entropies, because as, as Tobias had mentioned, um, because they're telling you something about if you like the moments of the distribution, it's telling you more about what these abundance distributions are doing and more about diversity. So it's telling you about, okay, is my, is my distribution very even or is it not and so forth. So we're sort of advocating thinking about all cues sim simultaneously. So think about the whole family of relative entropy measures rather than just one. Um, uh, and, um, and, so, um, and then we can take this further with our similarity sensitive version, which allows us to then sort of be more open about what we're assuming when we're talking about diversity. Okay? Usually when people are talking about diversity, they are implicitly assuming each species is different, but in reality we know we, 
we, we, we kind of want to include more information on that, and this is a way to do it. And in fact, the formula that I showed you encompasses many of the diversity measures that are in the literature, and that's sort of one of the advantages of the approach we've taken. So um, if people have come across like uh, FAIF's phylogenetic measure of diversity, that's actually a special case of this. Um, uh, Rao's quadratic entropy is a special case of this. So a lot. So it's sort of one uh, equation that captures a, a whole uh, mass of, of formulas that are in the literature and sort of puts it all un under one nice umbrella. Okay. Um, and then taking this further and, and allowing us to sort of compare between sites, then we can start talking about okay, which sites um, contain particular ra particularly rare things, which sites are. Uh, have uh, all our rare stuff, which sites uh, are particularly distinct in our ecosystem. So that's going to be quite, potentially be quite a useful um, tool for identifying, uh, for example, places for conservation. If you want to identify, okay, are there any special places in my ecosystem where the diversity is particularly different to the, the global picture? Okay. And I'll, I'll stop there. Okay. Oh, sorry, I just realised I haven't thanked everyone. <laughs> sorry, I should say... <laughs> Sorry. Um, so let me just thank t t uh, Tom, uh, who's you know, involved in all of the work that I've talked about, and then Richard and Louise. Richard's here. So Richard is the person to ask about if you want to hear more about the relative entropy, cross entropy stuff. Um, so, and he's been involved in, in all that stuff, as has Louise. So I should thank them. So, yeah. <laughs>